All right, here are two versions of the WeCreate Vision, a desktop diode laser. This one is 20 watts and this one is 40 watts. Now, all of the other features were exactly the same, including the price. Which one would you want to get? You would want the one with more power, right? What if I was to tell you that was actually the wrong answer for a lot of applications? And in this case, the cheaper version might be the better fit. So this paradox of power is just one of five lies slash misconceptions that I see about lasers. Let's talk about them so you can use the laser that works best for you. And it might even turn out that it's not the most expensive. Now, last year I did a product feature on the WeCreate Vision, the original 20 watt. And it was a sponsored video. And if you've been online, you probably have seen a lot of sponsored stuff from WeCreate. They really came out of the gate swinging. Uh, and this video is no different. This is also a sponsored video, specifically talking about their 40 watt version. But unlike some other companies where their newer version is replacing their old one, this is more like another flavor of the same machine. Now, before we talk about the lies, I'm going to give you the fast rundown on the features of this machine. And just to make this a little bit more fun than just a standard list of features, I thought we would make it rhyme like Dr. Seuss. In a workshop so bright with a hum and a gleam, the Weaker 8 Vision brings life to your dream. It lifts with grace the first of its kind, a desktop laser that leaves others behind. With an HD camera, as sharp as can be, it captures each moment for all eyes to see. And we create making software. Oh, what a delight. It makes crafting a breeze from morning to night. And when settings are tricky, don't fret, don't despair. A quick material test grid is ready to share. Need light burn support? <coughs> X tool. This laser's your friend for designs that dazzle from start to end. With FDA class one safety, you're always secure. The laser is a marvel of that, we can be sure. At 6,000 meters, per second it flies with 40 watts or 20 watts it reaches for the skies and when you need more the switch is a snap a two watt ir module is there on the map the we create vision is one of a kind in a world of lasers is leading the line this was paid and supported by we create all right with that nonsense out of the way let's get into the lies the first one is one that I've told you, this is more a stance I've changed over the years, and that is you can safely use a diode laser without an enclosure. Now these do have enclosures, and that's one of the things I like most about these desktop style machines now. Because if you've been following this channel at all or seeing lasers over the past few years, you know, a lot of times they've actually been open gantry. You'd be exposed to the light, to the fumes and the smoke, uh, and it was just, pretty dangerous and really before your only other option was to like build an enclosure or buy a much bigger and much more expensive co2 machine but now over the last year and a half or so there are a lot of machines in this form factor and we create does an excellent job with their enclosure but moving forward i really am going to only recommend enclosed machines for the vast majority of people because even though i do this basically for a living there's been lots of times um, i've just completely forgotten to put on glasses and the light has just been horrible. So while lasers are still very dangerous and you always want to be around them while they're running, it's nice that they are fully enclosed and you're getting that FDA class one certification as a result. All right, speaking of old videos, let's talk about lie number two. And this is one I addressed more in depth in the past. And with those open gantry machines, a lot of companies would advertise the power of the machine as the power going into the machine, not the power coming out. Meaning that the machine might be taking in something like 120 watts but it only had a laser module of like 10 watts. And so in like the product description and some of the marketing, you'd see them leading with that big 120 watt number, which I guess is technically right, but they knew what they were doing. Luckily, most manufacturers have moved away from that. But if you do find yourself on Amazon or Alibaba or Timu, you might run across those. Just read the fine print and see what the actual output of that laser beam is. All right, lie number three. And that has to do with this guy right here. This is the air assist pump um, that comes with the machine. And the lie is that you always want to have air assist. And that's usually the case, especially with cutting. But when you're engraving, a lot of times you don't actually want air assist because that's gonna interfere with the quality of your engrave. When you're doing engraves, usually you're gonna be at a lower power at a much higher speed. So the risk of flare ups and slip buildup and all that kind of stuff that air assist helps clean up, especially with cuts, isn't going to be an issue. And the air actually winds up interfering with the beam. So in my testing, not just with these machines, but a bunch of the machines that I have, 
If I wanna do a really nice fine engrave, especially like a picture engrave, then turning off the ear assist is actually super helpful. Lie number four is that all lasers can cut and engrave the same thing. And that is definitely not the case. It's actually one of the main reasons they give you an IR module, that two watt that can interchange um, into the machine itself because you'll wind up using that to engrave directly on metal where the standard blue light diode lasers won't be able to do that. And probably the easiest way to think about it is if you're doing something that is clear, so like clear acrylic or glass, a diode laser is not gonna work regardless of the power for the most part. In that case, you wanna move to a CO2 machine. And if you're wanting to do anything with metal, you're gonna need to look at a laser that is infrared. So that two watt IR module, or probably like the most common use case is going to be the bigger Galvo fiber machines that you've seen on my channel in the past. Now that's like super high level, but I went ahead and just basically made a big chart on my site of all the different materials that I could think of and told you basically if you could or if you couldn't use a certain type of laser with it. So I encourage you guys to check it out. Link is down below. And lie number five from all the way at the beginning, the lie that more power is more better. And that is normally the case, especially if you're cutting things out, it's because with more power, you get more ability to cut through thicker stuff. And while cutting through thick stuff is super nice, uh, practically I find it more means that you can get through your material faster. So this is a quick cut test that I did on the 40 watt and the 20 watt. Uh, I mislabeled this one. This one is actually 20 watts. And you can see it's basically twice as powerful meaning that you can run it at higher speeds at lower power, which helps you save time at the end of the day. Now that's great, but it does come at a cost and that cost is a thicker laser beam. And to best illustrate this, I used this video microscope to actually look at a quick box engrave from both the 20 watt and the 40 watt. And as we are looking at it, you can see that the line is thicker for the 40 watt, the more powerful machine. Now we create doesn't try to hide this. They actually list out on the website uh, that the spot size of their 40 watt machine is 0 0.09 by 0 0.1 millimeters, where their 20 watt is 0 0.08 by 0 0.1 millimeters. And that's actually much closer than I would initially think. But across the board, basically as you're going down in power, you're getting a thinner and thinner laser beam, meaning you're gonna get a much finer engrave. So if you're engraving text, you're engraving pictures, you're not trying to cut through the material, all that extra power is actually gonna hurt you for what you're trying to do. So my recommendation between these two machines is if you need to cut stuff, 40 watts is going to be the way to go because you're gonna be able to go deeper and you're gonna be able to go faster. But if you're just looking at engraving for the most part, um, 20 watts is actually a pretty good sweet spot because you do have a good bit of power so you still can cut, but really you have enough power to where you can run it quickly. So while their two watt IR module is super nice and it's gonna be a a very, very fine beam, that one you will have to run a good deal slower compared to the 20 watt where you can crank up the speed. Now, I really have been trying to find other differences between these two machines, and they're basically identical. I did notice there are some like cable management um, that like this one has, that like this one doesn't. But also this one was like a pre-production unit, so that just might be on mine. There's a good chance that's not gonna be the case with the ones now. So practically the only difference is going to be the wattage and then the price. And if you don't need to cut, you actually can go with a cheaper option. All right, if you made it this far, I would actually love to know in the comments down below the type of stuff that you do with your machine. Do you mostly engrave? Do you mostly cut? I would love to know where you guys are at. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.